So as we get into Photoshop again, there's going to be a lot of new stuff for, for most of y'all. Um, and I'm going to start at the beginning. I'm going to start with just simply how to open a file, um, <clears throat> how to save a file, resolution, all those kind of things that we'll need to know as we start to um, develop into Photoshop. And then we're going to start to get into some of the tools um, to keep you all going and let you know what all that thing is. So, um, you know, today will be the first day of student driving. What do we have to do? Okay. All right, so um, buckle your seatbelts. We're going to be off to the races. Mm -hmm. Recording is going. Photoshop. share and we're gonna go all right so um when you open your photoshop you should get something similar to this it's kind of like a little home screen and <clears throat> you're gonna see a similar screen for um all the kind of adobe products they're gonna be very similar in nature um so <clears throat> what this is a couple things one is gonna show you what you worked on recently. So these are some of the things we, we had open the other day. And um, it's also gonna be a place that you can start to go in and, and work on new documents. <clears throat> you can also upload and download things from the creative cloud, from the cloud that there is some cloud storage that comes with the Adobe um, item. And then in here is some kind of tutorials, okay? So, um, you know, again, we're learning, but there's always going to be things that are new uh, or things you want to move ahead on. So, you know, feel free to look at the tutorials and, and those type of things in uh, the application itself. And in this case, uh, Photoshop. So um, the first thing you're going to do is open. Now I'm going to open up um, from our class list here. Um, I've downloaded the, the first three photos, one, two, and three. And as you open them, you can kind of click them and you can drag them over. So if you're on, if you're on a Mac, if you're on PC, I think you have to right click to do that. And you can also do right click here, save images and save it to wherever you like as to a folder. Um, if you have any issues, just say it's okay. Um, some of the, this picture I know in particular gets a little weird downloading because it, it got up, corrupted or it got messed up kind of going up. But um, so right click, and you'll get a pop-up or just kind of drag it over and you see the little plus pop-up and you can drag it that way. So I've done the first three photos that we're going to work with today. Um, so again, it's danielmgross.com forward slash dart one. So you guys can open that up and get those pictures. Um, that way, as I'm going along with things, um, you can, um, work with those also. And again, I'm going to give you time to work with them with that. Um, so that's just recording. Okay. Um, all right. So we're back here. And I'm long one. Go back to home. So I'm just going to go to file and open. Now we'll go we'll, we will go through these panels as we go. But if you see this little kind of uh, com we call it the command on a Macintosh. On a PC, it's going to be a little bit different, but um, these are kind of like keyboard shortcuts. So um, I will use certain keyboard shortcuts that I, I tend to use a lot, but I don't use all of them. Um, but again, there's there are a lot built in. Um, so if you are doing certain things a lot, you tend to use them. Um, but it's just kind of a, a personal preference. Um, so if you want to use keyboard shortcuts, I will tell you big ones like save, we'll use that a lot. So command S, um, we'll using those all the time, command P, which is print. And, and most of these keyboard shortcuts work cross platform, meaning they don't just work with, um, uh, they work with all the Adobe products, but they also will work with many other products. Um, you know, if you're in Microsoft Word and do command S, it's going to save. Um, or command P, it's going to print. So 
you know, some keyboard shortcuts are well worth kind of putting to memory. Um, <clears throat> other ones are up to you. And like I said, I'm, I will go over them, the ones that I do. Um, Command Z, which is undo. Um, we do that a lot. Command X, cut. Command C is copy. Command V is paste. So those I do. Um, but if there's new ones coming up, we'll go through those. Also, you'll see here if anything's in gray, that just means you can't do that at this point. Um, at this point, we have nothing open. So there's nothing that we can, it, there's nothing for the program to do. So we're going to go to open first. And I'm on my desktop. Uh, home. I think I called it class picks or something like that. Here we go. And we've got the girl in the hat right here. I'm going to open. So it, you're going to get this kind of error message potentially. If it says something like that, just hit continue or OK. And you're open. And what, it, what it's, what's happening is there's this kind of something went wrong with the photo and it's black at the bottom. OK, so we will. Fix that. Now let me just get my control panel set so you can see and I can see. All right. So um, the first thing that I typically do as I come into a program is to um, copy it, right? Because I want to keep the original, and I, and I know I have I have the original file. But, um, you know, as I'm starting to move along and do things, if I make some kind of, um, we'll say, catastrophic mistake, um, I know I have the original to kind of go back to. So I just make a copy. In this case, it's called background. That's the first one. I just do it down here to the plus. So I'm in the layers panel. Okay. Um, so if you don't see it up here, if you don't have it on the right side of your screen, if you do, click it and it opens up. If you don't have it, uh, go up to Window, and then you will see Layers here. And if you click on that, it pops it up. Okay. Um, and if it's somewhere out here, you can take your panels and drag them over. And you can see you can kind of drag these around to get these in whatever order you tend to use. Okay. So these panels themselves are removable. Um, they're adjustable, meaning where you put them in your panels here. Um, so I always put layers at the bottom. That way I just know where it is quickly. Okay, that makes sense, everybody? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Percent, Steve. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, so I've made a copy of our girl. Now, I know there's a problem down here with the black, so I'm just gonna crop that off real quick. So I'm gonna go over to Crop Tool. The Crop Tool is one, two, three, fourth one down. Um, and you're because you're probably so new at doing Photoshop, feel free to leave these things on. And it's like, okay, what does that do? You know, it's gonna pop over and you can click Learn More and it's gonna open up a little discovery panel and show you what to do. Um, and that's coming out of here at the question mark area. So up on the side here, discover. Um, so feel free to do that. Um, I think it'll, it'll speed things along sometimes. Um, but again, I'm going over most of it. So I'm just going to kind of ignore these as they pop up. Um, and when you click on the word crop or the panel crop, you get a couple tools. You get the crop tool, a perspective crop, uh, which we'll deal with later potentially. And then you have the slice tool. And these are designed for excuse me, cutting up a photograph um, in a way that will allow it to load quicker onto a web design. Um, back in the days, back in the old days, um, the web was slow, right? I mean, you, it was just very slow to use. Um, it worked, but the idea of having a high-speed internet was just like, forget about it. Um, nobody personally could afford it. It was all kind of in your companies and places that you work and um you know the idea of they call t1 or a fast line was like just it didn't happen you know and that was you know you, you didn't stream there was very little video online because it was um very slow and, you know the idea that you can just stream a movie or live tv today is just it's kind of crazy um 
again, we're talking, you know, 20 years ago, um, 25 years ago when the internet was really starting to kind of develop in the way that we have it today, um, we didn't have fast internet. So the, the slower speed meant it was faster to take a picture and cut it up into, for example, this photo, break it up into six or eight smaller pictures and let the computer put it back together um, to make the picture. So it was basically taking it and then kind of a, the computer would jigsaw puzzle it back together. So it was um, faster to send small little bytes than to send one big byte. So if this picture was, um, you know, a megabyte, it was faster to send it as little 250 kilobyte pictures to combine them later to make the one megabyte photograph. Um, so we don't use slices a lot today, but it's still in there, still part of it. Uh, you know, and there are some applications where you may want to uh, slice a picture. We're not gonna deal with that too much, um, but that's what that is. Okay, so right now we're just cropping. And as we hit the crop tool, well, you'll get this, you'll get these kind of handles. Um, and, and you can see as you scroll over them, your cursor will change. In this case, it's changing to windows, right? You can change the size of the crop, okay? Um, if you hold down the shift, it keeps things proportional as you're cropping. Okay, if you don't hold the shift, it can change to whatever crop size you want, okay? And you'll see as I go larger, it actually adds on to the photograph. Um, in this case, we don't really need it, but it is a good thing. Um, it used to be before we had to add to a photograph to an image size. Um, this is a way to do it today in, in Photoshop. Um, it's much quicker now with the crop tool. It, it, in the past, we would have to go to image size and, and resize. Now we can actually physically resize. Now, and why is it good? We might want to add a frame to this picture. Um, so instead of taking away from the photograph itself, we want to add some kind of outer border. And it could be just something as simple as a color. Um, and that's what happened here with the black. The picture got cropped and added in. So I'm just going to pull this down. And I'm literally taking each side and just moving it in to get rid of the clear space of the area around it. And once I've done that, I'm just going to double click on it. And you see it made that crop. OK, um, so now it looks like I got a little bit of a white edge here. So I didn't crop quite enough. I'm going to crop it one more time over here. I'm just going to move that in just a fraction more. Hit return, and now we're going. Now we're good. Move the bottom. I got the black still down there. It's getting old. My eyes are getting fuzzy. Is that right? Looks like it's right. Now we just got a little shadow and that's just uh, Photoshop putting that in just so you can start to see it on the panel itself. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just kind of go through some, some touch up tools. Now um, this is probably one of the first things you end up doing in Photoshop is kind of touching up. Uh, whether it be a, you know, a picture of a face or um, you know, objects, things on the wall, dust, um, I get dust on my lens sometimes. There's one of my, somewhere in my camera, there's dust, a dust spot and it always kind of shows up and I have to kind of take it off. So we're gonna go through and just kind of do some real, real simple basic touch-ups right now uh, with her. Now, I, a couple of ways to work. One of the ways we wanna to try to work, we call it non-destructive, meaning I wanna kind of keep the picture the best I can. So again, if I go too far, I can come back and, and, and step it back a few steps and go back to where I was originally. So um, I'm gonna show you like two ways of doing that right now, just kind of fixing it. So we, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of some of the blemishes. And we went through some of this the other day. So we got a blemish, a blemish here. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, about seven tools down. And these are the healing brushes. I'm gonna click on that. Um, we got spot healing, we got the healing, the patch, content aware, and red eye. Um, so we're gonna go to the spot healing tool first. And when you click on that, again, it looks like a band-aid with a kind of a circle around it. 
In this case, I'm getting the circle, and this is my paintbrush. So this circle that you're seeing on the screen is actually the paintbrush that I'm using. Now, to change the paintbrush, I'm going up here to the upper left, and you can see I can change it here, moving the size up and down. I can change the hardness, which means how hard or soft is it on the outside. So 100% means it's a really sharp, crisp edge, and then back to zero is a really soft edge. So, you know, I'm probably going to want to be somewhere in between 40, 50%. Um, I'm not in a pen, sense, pencil, or uh, if you have a, a tablet um, or you're using kind of an I, iPad to draw with onto your system, you can use the pier. Okay, so it could be a pressure, okay, or the stylus wheel. Um, it's on, it's set there, but it, it's not making any difference to my computer. Now, the other way to make a brush bigger, and again, this is a keyboard shortcut, is there's brackets on your computer. So next to the P on the computer, um, on your keyboard, there's two brackets. So one, one second here. The left bracket makes it smaller, the right bracket bigger. Okay, so just kind of touching those keyboards will do that. And why? Well, that's kind of a, a keyboard shortcut that's used throughout, and you will end up using that a lot just because it saves you as you're starting to work, moving things up and down. So you wanna have a brush that's a little bigger than what you want, uh, but not so big that it's gonna cover the entire, in this case, you know, quarter of her head, okay? Because in this case, it's gonna, it's gonna, the computer's gonna do a lot of changes what you don't want. You wanna be very kind of, um, specific with your change. So if I make a big change, we're gonna click it big here. It doesn't know what to do. It's like, it's so big. Okay, so we're gonna undo that with this command Z. See, it's kind of it's freaking out there. If I go really small and paint with this, you can see it just kind of made it go away. So you kind of want to brush a little bigger than what you're doing. Um, so that's where the plus and minus the brackets left and right come into play, where I might want to go a little bigger and just click a couple and we're there, um, or a little smaller here and do that. So you want to kind of get your brush just a little bigger than what you want. And you can paint with it. You can move it over an area to cover more area. It's nothing that says you have to do it with one click. Okay. Um, but you, what we're doing is just kind of removing, in this case, some of the blemishes um, that are on her face. Now you don't necessarily wanna get rid of everything because it's some of those little blemishes or those kind of imperfections that make us perfect, okay? So we're just kind of getting rid of stuff that you know you and I would obviously want to kind of maybe take care of um, without making it look too thick. If we go too much, um, it's gonna look fake and you're gonna go, well, that looks too weird. So zoom in and out um, command plus or minus is the zoom feature. You can also go over here to the panel and the bottom tool looks like a magnifying glass. You can click on that to zoom. And that's gonna be out. If I hold option, it zooms in. If I undo, it just kind of has the magnifying glass, it goes out, okay? If I hold the space bar, you can, it turns into a hand and I can kind of move things around. Okay. I really don't use the magnifying tool um, because I simply just do the plus and minus, which is the command plus or command uh, minus on the keyboard. So that's a keyboard shortcut that I use quite often. Oops. Um, so did I answer your zoom in and out? Okay, I'm, I'm a little slow on the chatting. Hold on, wow, scrolling the windows, yes. Okay. So um, zooming in, zooming out, brush is bigger, smaller. Okay, that's the bracket left and right. Um, holding the space bar, which is the move around. So if I'm zoomed in, and I want to get around, I could move my, the, my mouse, in this case, I have a track on it. So 
So I can go up and down this way, but I can also just kind of push, push down on the space bar and drag, okay? And you'll, you'll find that you do that a lot because it's just easier, right? It's just kind of easy to kind of drag over. And the cool thing is when doing that, I'm still in my same tool, all right? So I didn't change tools down here and have to go back. I'm in the same tool and now I can kind of bracket a little bigger, paint it out a little smaller, get that blemish out and just come back and forth here, okay? And again, you can make larger areas if you want to. Um, and again, it's kind of going through. She doesn't have really wrinkles, so that's not gonna be a problem. But when you're looking with more senior people such as myself, we've got a little bit of blemish. We've got some wrinkles. You're gonna take those off. Um, wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, I'm gonna like kick some wrinkles off, all right? Um, we're not going through and there's, there's things like we see, you know, hairs on the faces or I don't know, some of it might be just scratches on the film or the, the picture itself, who knows? Um, we're just kind of cleaning it up a little bit. We're not doing everything with it. Um, so we're going through and we're doing all this and you can see we're all on that background layer. That's what we've been working on. If I turn that off, you can see those things start to pop back in. All right, so you can see those blemishes and do that. And you can see what I've done to take them away. Now there is a problem here. See this hair got copied over. It wasn't there. What it did was it copied from up here. So when the computer is working, it's kind of finding an area adjacent to where you're working and trying to copy it in. Okay, so that's there. I don't want that, so I'm just gonna take that off. Okay, so we're, we've done these changes. Now, it's okay because these are changes I want to do from a permanent standpoint. Um, but let's say I wanted to do it with a, a non-permanence or want to be able to change things. I'm making a separate copy here. Um, and then I want to make a, I'm going to make a new layer. So this is two ways of working. One is working directly on the layer. And in this case, I'm going to work on a new layer. So I'm going to hit the plus and just going to create a new layer. So now I have a new layer on top of this. Ignore this one here. That's down here, we don't care, we don't care. So I've got two layers, one with the photograph and one that's blank, okay? And I'm gonna work on the blank layer and have it relate to the layer below. And what do I mean by that? Is I'm going to, again, select my spot healing and then I have up here sampling, okay? And mode, Okay, we could, we're gonna be in normal. And just check in here and make sure we're in content aware. You'll see what I'm doing now is I'm painting on the layer, the blank layer, right? I'm not on the layer where the photograph is, but what I'm doing is I'm working here and what it's doing is the computer is reading the layer directly below to do what I want to do. So it's doing exactly what I was doing before, except in this case, I'm working on a blank layer. And what this is allowing me to do is make the changes, these modifications uh, to, in this case, the blemishes on her face without changing the picture itself. So I'm gonna turn off the blank layer and you can see they all come back on. And if I turn on the layer and look at that, this is the blank layer now. The blank layer is literally just where I've been painting over those blemishes, okay? So the cool thing about this is we're changing, visually we're changing what it, we see below, but we're not being destructive to that layer, okay? So it's called working in a non-destructive fashion. Um, and this is kind of good, okay? Um, it's good to be able to do this because sometimes I might want to come back and just change. Let's say I've, I've done all this and we're showing the client. She's like, you know what? It looks too perfect. Can you like put some pimples back in, for example? So I can come back here and I can literally take off this part of the thing. I can erase it. You can come down here to my eraser tool and I can literally erase it. And now that blemish is back, okay? because I just erased it, okay? So what I'm doing is erasing on the layer, but if I was doing the change here, which I did here, I can't change it, 
Okay, once I've made that change, I can't add that back in um, technically. I can go back to some of the history, okay, and, and, and see what I've done. But once I've opened and closed the, the, the file a few times, it like show me where this was, right? I can't, it's to be so difficult to find that peeling brush spot that I did. Okay, so by working non destructively on the layer above, I can then come back in and make those changes should I have to. Okay, so not a big deal right now in this particular project for what we're doing here, uh, but you will see, and I'm gonna show you in a minute how this is really kind of cool. And you're gonna want to be able to work with the layer above in this case. So what's happening is basically the, the photo is, it's looking at the layer below as it's working. So some, depending on the tool, you might have to tell it to work below okay or this layer or current layer or current layer below or current layer below you'll see that pop up here on the panels okay so depending on the tool that we're working with so i can come through here in this particular case and work out all the blemishes that i want and it's taking them off and it's only working what's below Okay, now it works well for blemishes. It also would work well if I'm trying to smooth things or darken things. Um, again, and it's, and it's also a way to kind of work where if I make a mistake, if I will, I didn't want to do that. Now I got the eyeball kind of coming out, right? So I did that and you can see where it literally is wrong there. Okay. I can come back to my layer here and go, I didn't want any of that in there. That was a mistake. Um, I was one, two mark, one or two martinis into working today. So I can just literally take that off and now we're back to where we were. Okay, so because it's on a new layer. Had I done it on the layer itself, okay, made that, oops, that was, a, that was an eraser. So that's a mistake. But let's see, I did the, I did that. If I didn't notice that and didn't correct it immediately by doing command Z, undo, if I didn't do that, I would be kind of stuck there, okay? Or I could go back to my histories, okay? But if I didn't, if I got this into way down, at some point I'm gonna forget it and I'm not gonna be able to find that layer because it's now a part of that layer, okay? So by working above, we're able to undo that, okay? So by working above the layer, we can. All right, so um, really cool way to do it. So the healing brush, um, and if you get this, you're like, what's going on? I want to work, I get the no sign. Well, that just means in this case, I'm on a layer that has it turned off. Okay, you're, you'll see me kind of turning eyeballs on and off. That's whether I'm on it. And in this case, it's gray. That means I'm on that layer, if I want to work, in this case, I want to work on the layer above. So I'm clicking whatever one I want. So to see a slight color change on that. You can also rename these layers. Okay. So if you let me see where that option is here, the quick way. If you select the layer and write on the words, it kind of highlights, in this case, change names. And I can put girl, I can rename things. As you get busy, as you start getting complicated, um, you could have 30, 40, 50 layers. You could have 100 layers potentially on a project. Um, so this is where kind of naming comes into play and is helpful. In this case, we're only a couple layers. It doesn't make a big difference. Um, but you know, as you get more complicated layers, you're going to want to do that. So I'm going to come back here. I'm just going to kind of take out a couple more blemishes. And again, I'm just looking at some of the big ones. I'm not getting you know really minute, but again, you can zoom in, okay? And again, if you zoom in, you start to see we're getting in there. And this is what we call pixels or bitmaps. You can see the squares on the screen, okay? And those squares are parts of the picture, okay? And that's zoomed in as far as we can go right now. We're at 12,800 zoom. So when we deal with photographs, we're doing what we call bitmap or pixels. And this is a pixel in this case, it's square. 
the photographs are made up of millions of pixels, slightly different colors to put together to make a picture. Now, this is different than when we get to Illustrator, which is called a vector-based um, image, which is made up of mathematical points. Okay, so in this case, um, it's made up of little squares or little pixels of data. Okay, and our pictures can only support so much. And the, the higher the resolution or the larger the picture, typically we have more pixels, which means we can make the picture bigger. So if you download a photo from the internet, odds are it's a really, it's a low res image. Let me find a, a page here. Um, okay, so this is a, now let me find a photograph, it'll be easier. Um, today is the, 105th anniversary of the National Park Service. Um, so I'm gonna to go to Yellowstone, which was our first national park. Um, 1872, I think it was started, something like that. This is pulling up Yellowstone, the, the show. I've never seen it. Is it any good? Anybody seen it? Anybody watch this? It's really, I've is seen that, it, it's really intense. It's good? Yeah, it's really good. I recommend it. Okay. Um, it's an intense, sorry, it's a, <laughs> I was going to say it's intense at some points, but I think it's amazing. Okay. Kevin Costner is a good guy, so, okay. What is it on? Is it on Netflix or is it CBS or? I'm blanking on the service right now, but I think it's called Plex. I'm, it's not on Netflix or anything like that. Okay. Let's look it up. Um, sorry, so we're going to pick Yellowstone, just a picture, and I'm going to just, uh, we'll pick National Geographic, right? Because they're like known for awesome pictures. Now this is pretty large. This is right here. I'm clicking on the corner. It says it's 3,000 by 1,700. So I'm going to click on it. And this will be, we'll see if it shows up here somewhere. Um, it, it, somewhere on here is that thing. It's probably a decent resolution. Um, but let me pick this the artwork i'm just trying to find a picture so i can quickly download and show you the difference um so here's a photo please respect the copyright unauthorized use prohibited well that's kind of cool they tell you that right away and let's see if i can take it yes so i'm going to grab it and i'm just going to take it over to my desktop and i'm going to let me go find it here file open on my desktop someplace just a, there it is. So it's Yellowstone. It's 260 kilobit, which, which I know is a very small picture. Now, um, I think this is Moran. Moran is the, the artist. And it's kind of one of those paintings that actually help inspire people to you know, Congress and so forth to make Yellowstone a national park. So this was done in the, the mid 1700s. And this is actually called the, the Grand Canyon of Yellowstone. Um, and this is a, a huge waterfall there. But if I look at this zooming in, we're going to get, we can see already, I'm not zoomed in that much. And we're starting to get kind of, it's blurry because there's not that many pixels. So as I keep zooming in, you can see the pixels are appearing much quicker because it's a low resolution image. And if I go up here under image and look at the, the image size, it's going to give me the, what it is. It's saying it's 10 by seven, 17 by 10 at 72 DPI. So anything 72 DPI is what we call low resolution um, used on the internet. Now, again, it's pretty big, meaning it's 10 inches by 17 inches. Okay, so there's a little room here where I can rescale this to up the resolution. Um, and, and that's unusual. Most times it's even smaller, the pictures, uh, but we're dealing with National Geographic, so they're, they're trying to get as high a resolution as they can without making it um, so slow to download. So this is really a two meg, 2.6 meg pic picture, picture um, which is pretty big for internet. Most pictures are uh, under a meg, sometimes under like 500 um, 
kilobits. Uh, the smaller it is, obviously, the faster it loads. Okay. So um, you want to try to get your pictures the size that they need to be without having to do too much uh, scaling. Okay. So pixels are the, the dots and specs that we get. Um, if a picture is low res, you're going to see those a lot more. You're not going to be able to enlarge them as much. Um, and we ultimately want is the best resolution we can get. Now, if we were going to print this, like we were going to print this photo in National Geographic magazine, we will want this image to be at least 300 um, DPI or 300 pixels. Okay, and when we looked at this, we saw that we are 72 pixels. Okay, um, so we would want this picture to be literally one and a half, two times, three times bigger for the most part to print well. Okay, so when we look at a magazine or something that's been printed, it's typically 300 pixels. Okay, so this is 72. So to do this, there are ways of changing it. I can make it a resolution of 300, but you see the picture got really small. It's two by four now. So it, got, it went from this to this, okay, because I've changed the resolution. Um, and if I wanted that in the magazine at two by four, that's fine. But if I wanted it in the magazine to be four by, by eight, the resolution would not be enough, okay? Um, in that case, if I, that would be 150 or so. There we go, four by eight, okay? So you can see everything is kind of dependent on the resolution, um, the size, determines the resolution, which determines the pixels per inch. So they're all kind of related um, together. Are we practicing on Adobe? Yeah, we are in Adobe. So, you, and you guys can work along with this. Again, I'm just kind of doing things, but you, you should be, I would you know, recommend that you guys, as I'm going through things like um, the girl and we're doing the blemishes to be doing that. Feel free to open the tools up and work along. That's why I'm kind of, giving you guys the photographs, okay? All right, so in this case, um, the resolution is pretty good on her. Um, and we're gonna just kind of work it up and work blemishes out. And again, we're working on the, the non-destructive way by the layer above. Now, I want to go through a couple more, but that was the, we've done the crop tool today and we've done the spot healing tool. Okay. These are other ways of doing and fixing things and, and we'll get into those, but I just want to kind of start off easy. Do the crop. I'm just writing down what we've done so I can keep organized for you guys. All right. So next, um, I want to do, I want to give her a third eye. I'm going to go a little nuts. I have a third eye right up here on the forehead, all seen. Um, I want her to um, know it all. I want her to be with this kind of all seeing thing. So I'm not, I'm, I'm not fixing any more blemishes. I know there's a couple little um, disdains on her, her teeth that we could kind of wipe out. And we might come back to that, but I want to kind of just move ahead quickly on the all seeing eye that we're going to do. So a couple ways of doing this. I'm going to make another new layer. And you can already see I got layer one, layer two, they're kind of getting maybe confusing. I'm going to click on this. Click right on the name. Come on, there we go. I'm just going to put that as blemish. And I'm going to label this one third eye. Let me get the clicker going here. Come on. That way I know what I'm doing. So <laughs> what I want to do is I want to copy an eye into this layer. A couple ways of doing it. Okay. One, I'm going to go back to the layer of the picture. And I can go down here to the second tool down, it's called a marquee tool. 
and that allows me to select an area. So you can do a round, uh, circular kind of rows uh, if you want to. And I'm going to just kind of do a, a, a circular one. I'm just going to, you see, they got the pointer here. I'm just going to drag. And as I drag, you see, I get what we call the marching ants, which is, it means that that area has been selected. Okay. So what I can do is I can copy this command C, or I can go to image, I'm sorry, edit and copy. And then I'm going to go up to my layer of third eye and I'm going to do command D, which is paste. And you can see now I have that in there. Okay, so that's there. It's not, I guess my brush was small, it was feather. Okay, I'm gonna turn that off. Let me go back. So I didn't quite want it to feather that much. Let me just erase that whole layer. So again, you can make changes. I'm just selecting and deleting. With that, um, I'm gonna go back to my ellipse. So my feather was at a hundred. That means it's kind of getting off. Um, you have to leave, that's fine. Um, I, this will be recorded and I'll get that up online. Um, the homework is literally just putting a, you're gonna be putting the third eye on the girl. It's, I'm not collecting it, but that's what the homework's gonna be. Okay, it's what I'm doing now. Okay, just get you guys used to, it's not gonna be marked. Um, Yes, you're here. Everybody's marked here, right? I got you on the attendance sheet. Yes, you're good. Um, so I'm going to put the feather at zero. We don't want it to feather. Um, and that's normal. That's fine. So I'm going back to her. And I'm going to select that. Copy. Oops. Copy. Come back here. I'm going to paste. I'm gonna make sure it pasted good. So there you can see I have her eye and it's very crisp on the edges and I can kind of soften that up. I'll, I can paint that softer in a minute. Um, and I wanted to actually on that, that third layer, I was painted it wrong, but it's okay. We'll call that the, turn that one off. We had our eye here. So what I can do now is using my, my pointer tool, the move tool, I can select that and you can see I can literally move that over and now she has an eye there. Okay, so I'm zooming in and you can see it's on a new layer. And that's what we want. We want it to kind of be on a new layer because if I did it on the same layer, um, it will get very confusing as I start to kind of blend it in. What we're trying to do is kind of blend this in so it looks like it's a part. And right now you can see it doesn't look like a part because it's a hard edge. Okay, so we're going to go through painting out that hard edge um, and then we'll do a little bit of a color adjustment on it um, to give her that, that third eye out there. Okay, so this, again, this is one way. There's two ways of doing it. So I'm just going through one real quick. Um, so to, to blend it out, um, I'm going to, in this case, I think just use the paintbrush, the eraser tool rather. All right, so I'm using the eraser tool, which looks like an eraser above the paint bucket. Okay, and I'm gonna go with the opacity. I'm gonna drop it down to like 30%. I want to kind of be slow, okay? Um, and I'm going to make my brush a little smaller and I'm painting. And you can see it's not taking everything out. It's taking that a little of time. Um, I'm going to put the brush. My, it's on a hard brush. I want to make it soft. There we go. So now I'm on a soft brush. I'm actually going to up the opacity a little bit. So what I'm doing is I'm painting out this edge to be softer. Now I can see the colors off, okay? And we will adjust that color in a little bit, but I'm trying to get rid of this hard edge. And you can see whatever I'm doing is only affecting this layer, right? So I don't even need that on for that matter. Um, I'm just working this layer here, okay? So just kind of softening that edge a little bit. Tweaking that out. And we can turn her back on and we can kind of see it's there. So, and again, I can still make the move tool. I can still move it around. I don't want it there. I can move it up and down. I can even scale it 
Okay, so another tool you're gonna to be using a lot is called scaling, um, which is in this case, the keyboard shortcut, shortcut is command T. Okay, so I'm gonna go edit. You can do free transform, which is gonna do command T. Command T, I'm gonna hit that. And you see, I get these little handles. And if I hold the shift as I move, I will enlarge it. If I don't hold the shift, I get this proportional. If I hold the shift, I can tweak it. Okay, you will, you will get confused as I do because in Illustrator, it's the opposite. All right, so right now, if you just kind of grab the corner and move it, it will scale it because maybe the eye is too big. I don't want it so big on there. And we're here and we're pretty good. I just hit return and that takes it away. I got a little bit of a shadow here I want to get rid of still. So I'm going to get go back to my eraser tool, get rid of that there. All right, so there, I'm going to try to even this out a little bit. So when I make my color adjustments, um, it's not going to be as much to do. I'm trying to get it fitting in as smoothly as I can. And I'm just kind of drawing with my, my mouse. Um, if you have a stylus or something like that, obviously it makes it easier. Um, I just kind of learned to draw with a computer mouse over time. All right, so we're gonna call it there. So we have the eye. And if we look at it from a distance, it's not bad. When we zoom in, we can see there's the color difference is still off. So what we're gonna do is kind of make a little bit of adjustments here. With um, the layers, we also get a lot of control under this. So when we click on normal, that's kind of showing you that layer normal, but underneath there's different options. And as we scroll over, it shows you what will happen with this layer style, okay? And sometimes you have to kind of play with them to see which one's gonna show up and it might work quickly. I'm just kind of looking to see if something's gonna fix it the way I want before I get into any other kind of adjustments. That's not working. Nothing really. So the, the dark can work a little bit kind of blend it a little bit darker color. Mm. Not quite, but it's close. So I'm gonna just do that for now. So again, you can make adjustments with this. And again, there's 10 different ways of doing things in Photoshop. Um, and ultimately you wanna try, okay, well, this is quick. Let me see, oh, that didn't work. Let me try something else. So if it didn't work, you're not out anything. You're only out a few seconds. Um, so I'm gonna just put that at back to normal, really not making a big difference. Um, the other thing I can play with opacity, problem with that is when I do that, you can see it just kind of fades away, okay, which is not helping. It, it, it is helping, but it's not helping. Okay, so opacity is not something I want. I'm gonna have to make a color adjustment on this. So I'm gonna go up to image and I'm gonna do adjustments and I'm gonna play with, uh, let's just start brightness contrast real quick. So I'm gonna brighten it a little bit and I'm gonna drop the contrast a little bit. And we have the preview turned on so we can kind of see, and you can see already we're getting a better coloring going on there, All right? So it's not as dark, but it still looks like the eye. We're still keeping the natural color that's going on. We're just kind of dropping the contrast. And in this case, we're adding the brightness which is making it pop a little bit more, which is better, right? We're pretty close, I think, right now. Now we just kind of, the edge is not perfect, but that's gonna be a little more work to get in there and kind of play with that to kind of clean that up. So again, I'm with the eraser tool, um, keep that at 100. And we're at the zero hardness, which is good. Um, and smoothing. I'm gonna increase the smoothing a little bit. Yes, you can practice and you can also work along. Um, this will be the work that we're doing later. Okay, so over the weekend, I'm gonna have you just kind of work on playing with this eye. So by using the smoothing, it's kind of painting and smoothing as we go. And it should give me a little bit crisp or softer edge here. 
And I'm not worried about keeping every little eyelash in play here. Just kind of smoothing it out as we go. It's just looking pretty nicely. And again, sometimes it's kind of experiment, just kind of seeing what happens as you go to get to where you want it to be. Okay. So now we have a third eye. It's a little bit over here, a little wonky. I might come back in here and play a little bit. Um, but we're getting there, right? We're getting that eyeball into play. So what did we do? We copied the eyeball in this case from the, the layer with her on it, the girl layer. And we pasted it and then we went and cleaned up the edges. So again, that's one way of potentially working. I'm gonna show you a second way of doing the same thing. So in this case, we're gonna use the, the same idea. We're gonna to go to a clean layer. There's nothing on this layer. I call it third eye. And I'm going to go to two tools up, which is the clone tool. Okay, and I'm clicking on the clone tool. And what that does is the clone tool will copy from one thing to another. So in order to copy, I'm holding down the option key and I get a bullseye. And what this is saying, this is where it's gonna copy from. So I want the bullseye here. I'm gonna click with my mouse and that's now activated this bullseye area. And then you see it loads up on my brush wherever it was, okay? So it's kind of got that same area over here, copy, and I can make my brush bigger, as you can see. And I'm basically going to literally with one click, paint it in. So I like that one click, I painted that eyeball in. Um, and it was on um, softness there. It looks like, a, yeah, I was on a soft brush over here. So my opacity, my hardness was pointed. So I got a soft edge, which actually in this case worked out fairly decently. Um, so I've added that third eye in. Now it gave me some stuff up here that I didn't want. And as you can see, it's changing. So what's happening is wherever that relationship was with that cursor to that brush is the distance between one and one. So if I make my brush, we'll make it smaller so you can see again. And I make my cursor oops, down here with the teeth, you can see now I've loaded up the teeth and I could give her another mouth over here. That makes sense. So what it's doing is it's cloning, it's copying something to another area. Again, it's a, an incredibly useful tool, um, not only for putting a third eye on somebody, but also to copy out areas and to add in areas. Okay, and because I'm on a, a new layer, I'm here and I can work. And if I didn't want it or didn't like it, I can literally just come with my brush, okay, my eraser brush, and just kind of erase it out. Okay, so I can kind of pick off those kind of items. Okay, so we're here with the eye, and we got a little bit of blemish up top there. I'm gonna zoom in. Okay, I didn't want this shadow here, so I can literally with my eraser tool, in this case, just kind of erase out that area, and it's not affecting anything with the picture below. Okay, because remember, we are on a new layer with that eye. Okay, and I can literally come in here and just kind of paint. In this case, erase out some things if I didn't want it. And I'm not affecting the image below. Okay, so now we can see that there. Again, that got a little wonky in there. So I'm going to go back. Yeah, I guess it was like that. Smaller brush, got too big. Again, if you make a mistake, Command Z will undo it. Or you can also go back to your histories and you can drop back, okay? So this is what we did the, the longest time ago. And this is what we just have done. And you can see I jumped back two spots there, okay? Um, All right, so now we've got the third eye drawn in. We come back to the blemishes, can turn those back on if we want to. I can come back to blemishes with my healing brush, kind of work those up a little bit bigger. 
come back through a little more here. Likewise, when I get to the teeth, I could try the, the blemish or the healing brush. And I'm gonna try that and see. What it's doing is taking data from close by. And if I'm close with it, I can't, but you can see here, it kind of grabs something else, which I didn't want, grabbing from over here or something. So I can do Command Z. I can also use the clone tool, okay, and get make that obviously much smaller. And an option will click an area and I can kind of copy that way. So by re-clicking the source, when I click the source, I can clone it. So I'm clicking up here for the source and then I'm drawing with the tool. So you'll see, be able to do that quite quickly. And again, I'm not worried about fixing everything at this point, it's kind of getting rid of the major um, discolorations on this. Okay, but I can even come in here and maybe correct that little cut, smooth that out. Likewise, there's a cut over here. Again, I'm selecting a source area that's close by, so the color is gonna be relatively close. Um, color gets a little weird, right? You think it's something, but when you click and you see, it turns out not to be, All right? So you have to kind of work around and, and be kind of delicate with the use of color um, and let the computer do the work for you a lot of times. We oftentimes think it's one thing, uh, but in reality, it's quite, quite different. Okay, and that's not bad, that's not a bad, and we'll just show you here. That was the teeth before, a little bit after. Okay, and that's not bad. It's, it's not perfect yet. We can come in and do a little smoothing out of the color, um, but it's not too, too bad for, for about three seconds of work. Um, and we have her with a third eye now. Again, if you come back and the client decides that they don't want the third eye, they say, oh, we got to put a third eye on. And you did all this work and spent hours doing it. And they're going to come back and change their mind. Um, and this is what clients do. They always change their mind. And that's okay because we're the visual people. They're not. And for some reason, they think it's a great idea. And then you did it and you're going to go, well, it doesn't work as well as I thought it was going to work or just not. I can literally just turn that off and we're back to where we were. Okay, so we've done the blemish changes. We've, we've done the corrections on her face. Made it a little bit better, but we, at this point, we got rid of the third eye, okay? Um, because the client doesn't want that. And again, this is very, very common for us to happen, okay? So working layers will give you those um, opportunities to make changes and fix things, but also have the, um, ability to go back and change or undo things because guaranteed the clients will always change their minds. Um, and that client could be a real client or it could be yourself. You're gonna go, oh, that was stupid. I shouldn't be doing that. It'd be better if I do this instead. And this is gonna to come to you two days later. So at that point, it's really hard to make that change. But if you're working in layers, you can make those changes quickly and adjustments and you're back to where you were. All right, questions. I'm yakking for an hour here. Mm -hmm. Anybody? You must have somebody must have a question. Nothing. Mm -hmm. How do we go about there, like? Yeah. How do we go about adding like more shadows to different things if we like drop them in? How would you add more what? Like like shadow, for example. Like what if instead of adding a third eye, we wanted to add like a nose on there? How do we add shadow to it? Oh, you like, you would you would, you you're gonna literally do like we just did. We're gonna kind of keep drawing things in. So um, let me get this smaller here. So let's say you wanted a, a, a third nose. Again, I would work with a new layer. Um, that way I'm not um, destroying anything I, I didn't want. I'm just kind of turn that back those off. Um, I'm gonna probably in this case, just we'll just use the clone tool. That's fairly quick. But again, you could, you could um, 
do a marquee tool and capture the area, but I'm gonna use a clone tool. I'm gonna click option here. I'm gonna give myself a bigger brush. so We can actually see it. And you can see we've got that there. So it's gonna, I'm gonna be pretty obtuse. Um, so if it didn't get the shadows that you want it, we're on that layer. I'm gonna come back and in this case, I'm gonna clear up some of that underneath. I'm just gonna erase the lips down here. Get that away. Turn the smoothing off. I'm just getting rid of some of the area outside of that nose. And then we wanted a shadow. Well, in that case, I'm gonna do a new layer. And a couple of ways I could do a shadow. Um, one might just be painting. Let me use the brush tool. And I'm gonna give myself a, a black. These are the color palettes here. I'm gonna flip it so black is my my foreground color. And I can, you can see if I paint, I get black, which that's too much. So I'm gonna put my brush um, at a really soft hardness, maybe zero, and I can make the size whatever I want. Um, and I might change the flow a little bit so it's not gonna basically come out as black, okay? And I could just kind of come through here and you're gonna go, well, that's not quite working. Well, it could be one, I can change the opacity on that layer. So it's, it's just showing up a little bit that way. So I'm getting a shadow, but it's not, it's, it's a dark as, as, it becomes as dark as I want. The other thing is going back into these layer styles. Okay, so when I go with the layer styles, you can see it will start to change how that layer fits on top of the other layer. And what we're doing is basically adjusting how the computer sees things. So that soft light is not bad, right? We're getting a lot of nice color in there. It's not black anymore. So that's kind of what it would look like black, but the soft light kind of tones it in. Okay, so this is the layer style. And, and this really becomes kind of a trial and error. What works, what doesn't work. And there's all of these different styles and depending on what you're trying to do, it will work or not work. Does that make sense? So you, there's really no positive way of doing it. It's kind of just, um, working it. Uh, look at your phone. Yeah, you, you watching along is what is fine, guys. Okay, we're recording this. You can watch it later. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, ultimately, I want to show you what to do. So as you start to work on these programs tonight and so forth, and over the weekend, mm -hmm. um, you'll be able to do it. Okay, so here we have that and made that soft layer. So I've got the nose, and I've got the shadow here working together. And again, you can work with this and, you know, could you get that? Yeah, could get it perfect. It might take you hours to get it to be exactly where you want. And again, it depends on what you're trying to do with it, right? So we want to make this a picture on the internet. We can have a little more freedom because the details don't show up as well on the internet as they would say on a, a high definition picture that's going to be on some movie screen or something like that. Okay, so it's, it's all about kind of understanding where your work will be potentially. And if you don't know, you always work for the hire. So if I don't know if this picture is gonna be in a magazine, but it potentially could be, I'm gonna work it as a 300 DPI picture or better. If I know it's gonna be on the website, I could work a lower resolution to start with. Um, but I always say work the higher resolution. It's easier to, to down save it, to make it smaller. There's, it's really practically impossible to go from a small image to a large image, okay? And keep the image quality. It, it's very, very difficult to do. Um, so if you have a choice, work big and save small, then to work small and try to save big, that's just really difficult to do, okay? And if you don't like the nose, boom, turn it off. You're back to where you were, put the blemishes back in. We've got a you know, cleaned up picture, which quite works quite well. Okay, um, and just to show you where we were, I'll turn the original on. There's the original, okay, and here's what we've done to fix it. Okay, so I think that's everything in the picture. All right, so it's just getting rid of things and cleaning things up, making it look better. And, and why? Well, because if we don't, the viewer's eye is gonna tend to look at the spots or the specs or the imperfections instead of looking at how you know beautiful the lady is here. 
Okay, so we don't want that, and nobody wants that if they're their picture, their whatever, right? If you're, if you're they're paying for a photograph, um, a portrait, you know, I think it's our job to kind of clean it up a little bit. And it's still her, we didn't do anything different, right? We didn't change her, okay? And there are things I could do. I could, um, let me go down, it's easier to see. Um, I could play with reshaping her nose, for example. Um, let me, I'm just trying to think what would be the best way of doing that. Um, we'll use this smudge tool. So I'm going to zoom in real quick. And I want to make sure this is sample all layers. So this is where I'm saying you have to, some, I'm doing this, so it's going to sample below. It's going to pick below. I'm going to turn the blemish off because I don't want that to be affected. But I can literally reshape something like her nose. In this case, I'm smudging it, but I'm, I'm I think it's not going to be perfect here, but I'm reshaping her nose. Let me zoom out so I can see more. I'm going to make her nose smaller. This is, this is a very quick thing. It's not perfect by any means, but I gave her a thinner nose. You would do this much more carefully, trust me, if you had to do it in real life. But you can see I, I've, I've now narrowed her nose. What I've done here with the blemishes is nothing. I'm just taking away some imperfections here. I'm literally changing things. Okay. So you can do this kind of stuff in Photoshop. You can literally airbrush things. You can um, tighten up things. You can add things, take away. Um, and again, it depends on what you're trying to do. Okay. Um, but you know, if, if you had to do this, you could do that. That makes sense. So what we did was literally just kind of narrowed her nose a bit. Now you see that it's got blurry in here, uh, but that's something I could fix. Okay. Um, I might want to fix it throughout everything with that to give everything kind of a softer skin tone type of thing. Okay, and in this case, I used a smudge tool. There's a blur tool, kind of blurring things. And again, it depends on what you're doing and how to do it, but I can literally soften off the edges and blur out with the items. So again, it gives her a little bit more of a softer profile. Okay, a little kind of a skin smoothing kind of idea. Do that. All right. So Photoshop can do a lot. It can be a, it, it's an incredibly powerful tool. Um, right now we're just kind of the basics. Um, and as we go, you'll, you'll gain full control. Um, but working layers is important. Trying to work in a non-destructive fashion is important. Um, not being afraid to experiment because with the way we're working, if it didn't work out, it's no problem. I can go back and, and, and turn things on and off. So if I didn't like the nose job, okay, I can turn it off. Had I done it on the actual layer itself, it's kind of permanent, right? So again, I want to be able to kind of modify and do things as I need to um, and, and not be afraid to do it. All right, and we're going to get into this as we keep going. Again, there's so much, so much you can do here with this. So um, what I want to do now for homework, um, again, I'm not going to collect it, but I want you to do this. And if you have problems, you know, let me know. We'll talk about it on, on Monday, is to give her just a third eye. Take two things. Make, take the blemishes off and give her a third eye. Okay, so clean it up with the um, healing brush. Okay, the spot healing brush. And then go back with the clone tool or, or using the marquee tool, to select the eye and, and make that a new layer. Um, while we're here, let me just show you the, the healing brush. Not a big difference. Um, here, and I'm gonna just make a new layer so you can see it. Um, The healing brush takes from a different area. So as I click, you can see there's a 
over here on the left, there's a, there's a cross, a little target area. So basically it's very much like the, the cloning tool, but it's more subtle. Okay, so if I click here as my healing area and I paint, it's taking data from this area that I'm working with. Okay, so we want to, in theory, have it, it's relatively close. Um, so it's taking from one area, adding to the other, but it's doing like the spot healing brush where it's picking up pixels, but it's also grabbing data from the source area where the clone tool literally copies from one area to the other. Okay, so it's going from point A to point B. With the spot healing, it's doing what the clone tool's doing, but it's also doing what the spot healing tool's doing. So it's kind of like a combination. So it's really just a matter of what one's gonna work for you best for that. So I'm gonna click up here to get my source and then just draw, okay? So either way, it's gonna work, but you see my source is still way over here where it's getting the data from. And that might be okay because it's kind of the computer is working pretty good, but at some point it's gonna grab from the wrong area. Look, see, it's copying the eye in. See, it's getting the eyebrow, which I didn't want, right? It's gonna keep copying the eye. And you can see it's not 100% with it because it's also trying to interpret the closeness of it from the spot healing tool. Okay, so the healing brush is kind of a combination of the spot healing tool and the clone tool kind of put together. Okay, so either one will work depending on what you're trying to do and where you're trying to get the, the information from um, and moved over to. Try it, either one. The spot healing tool works 99% of the time. Okay, it just works really, really well. Um, and, and Photoshop is, it's gotten so darn smart. Uh, with this stuff. I mean, usually we had to clone this stuff. And, oh my God, it was so much work. And now it's just kind of click and you're kind of just painting over things. Um, and it totally works with not just skin, but if I had a photograph, let me just open up a photo. Uh, boop, boop, boop. Um, let me get some Joshua Tree. I thought I had Joshua Tree, but I guess not. Um, I'm going to find a picture to show you how it works. Um, I know there's going to be some blemishes in here. So I'm just opening up this photo. Not a great photo, it's a photo. But I can see right away, there's some blemishes going on like this here. This is a speck of dirt that fills up from my camera lens. Um, it's always in there. I don't know why I, I know to look for it now. Now my monitor's dirty, so that doesn't help, but I've got these specks. So I can literally now with the, the spot healing brush, give me a nice big brush that's gonna cover this just kind of paint along. And it's gonna just take out those specks, in this case that were in the sky, that are really just specks coming off my lens. Okay, so I can quickly do that. Um, but also maybe something like here where I don't want that tree, if I go slowly enough, I can kind of take it away. So I'm literally painting it out. I could be using the clone tool, but what it's doing is picking the data around it and getting rid of what was there, okay? So I got rid of that part of the tree that was up there, it was kind of distracting, and I got rid of some of those blemishes in the sky. And all I did was click one tool and a couple clicks on my mouse, okay? That's huge, okay? Um, you know, to be able to do that in Photoshop. Okay, so to go from, you know, from this, where we had the tree up here and we've got specks on it, down to something like this, okay? It's huge that you can do that, okay? Um, and that's really the power of Photoshop. It lets you make these changes and these corrections, uh, not just again on, on, on a face, but also on, on objects and in, on landscapes or architecture, um, add a window, take a window away, um, 
take people out of a picture totally. We'll, we're going to do that next class. Um, so next class, we're going to literally take a person out of the photo, um, which is always kind of fun. All right. So questions. So to, over the weekend, open up your Photoshop, continue to play, um, add a third eye to the young lady. Okay. Um, and then go through and take out the blemishes. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's, that's our homework. That's it. Okay. Right. So kind of clean her up and not give her a third eye. Hmm. Uh, the blemishes, uh, what should be considered like bad and should be clean up and what's should be considered like personal preference? Cause well, I mean, a lot of it just depends on, on, on the client in that case. I mean, it, it, uh. this, this girl paid me to take her photograph. Um, I would say, how much do you want me to clean it up? And she's like, well, make me look beautiful. I'm like, okay. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to take care of, you know, the traditional blemishes. Okay. You know, and she's got some and that's okay. Um, you know, and I'm going to maybe, you know, clean up a couple blemishes on her or, or discolorations on her tooth. Um, because maybe she, but she might say, I want that. Okay. Um, and again, you have to kind of communicate and understand, you know, there's people, you could fill in the gap on somebody's tooth if you wanted to, but they may go, look, that's part of me. That's who I am. And I want that gap in there and that's perfectly fine. So um, I think you kind of talk to them, um, you know, and if you're working with some company with models or something like that, they're going to kind of communicate what they want. Um, you know, are they going to say, you know, make her nose um, smaller, right? I mean, like you see that we're making her nose thinner. They can, it might be up to them. They're going to kind of tell you that. And, and we've heard about air brushing. And there is a point where you can kind of work subtle and it's okay. Um, but there might be a point where it's too much. You know, in this case, it might be too much. Okay. Yeah. But it's still there. It's still her nose. And we just kind of narrowed it out a little bit. And you can, of course, narrow out people's cheeks and, you know, their double chins like I got. It can make that smaller. Um, I think communication is the key here. How, how much... Uh percent do you think that uh, we should listen to the client and how much could it be our you know, um, or is... well the client's always right that's one number one yeah. but they are paying you for your your expertise um, if they could do it themselves they wouldn't be hiring you to do it does that make sense most of the time so um, I always would say here's the option so they're going to go clean me up and make my picture better. And I'm gonna go, okay, here is an option where I made your nose a little smaller because I know you were talking about that. If it's too much. I, I, I do. I, uh, I would show them options. Because uh, I do know some situation where the client said that they want this and then when the editor do that and it, it looked, it turned out bad and then they just want to revert it, you know? Well, but, again, you, you, you should we? I, I show options, um, and again, it's you know if the editor is making the final decision, then it's the editor. Um, you know, if it's the the client is making the final decision, that's fine. Things like I don't know. Like, let's say you're doing like family portrait, and you're out in the park, and it's all cool, um, but there's like some some leaves or some grass growing on the side. It just kind of it's not bad. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's kind of a little yeah. distracting. I think those are fine to take out. That makes yeah. sense. It's not a, an important part of the composition. <clears throat> so I think doing those kind of editing in place is perfectly fine. Um, and I think that's kind of what we do. And that's what Photoshop is really good at is kind of cleaning things up. And again, and we talk about hierarchy, you know, the hierarchy is I want you to see this, this, and this. I don't want you to look over to the left and see this little, you know, rock that's sitting there just happened to be there. Because um, many times when we're taking the picture, we didn't notice the rock when we were taking the picture. But now that we're looking at the picture, we see it. Um, so if you made a, you might have moved that rock in real life had you seen it, but you didn't. So now it's like just take it out. So I think it's a kind of a give and take with Photoshop. Um, again, I always kind of look at it from doing a little bit of tweaks, I'm enhancing the color a little bit, or I'm getting it more to where it really was. 
what the camera didn't ca the camera didn't capture exactly right. Um, but I'm not like you know, I'm not putting a dog in the photo if there wasn't a dog in the photo. Does that make sense? Yeah. But if the client wants a dog in the photo and say, here's my dog, I want you to put this in the photo. Sure, what do I care? You know, I mean, I can put that in. That's Photoshop, right? I mean, I can, you know, add things to photos. Basically have, magic. Yeah, yeah, that's totally the magic. Um, but it's really up to them. And we're going to get into more of this kind of editing as we go, um, adding things in and taking things out. It, it's, it is what Photoshop does. Um, and there's a time and a place for all of it. So um, I don't think this, you know, we're not doing anything ethically wrong, even by changing her nose. I mean, it's, there's nothing ethically wrong with it. She just might want to have her nose tucked a little bit. But, you know, I wouldn't do that unless she told me. Does that make sense? I wouldn't just automatically, oh, your nose looks fat. Make yeah. it small. I mean, you know, who am I to decide that? I mean, again, we are who we are. But if she says, you know, okay, hey, trim me up a little bit or whatever. I might go through and, hey, these are the options and you decide. Other questions, comments? Uh, yeah, I can think of. I, uh, I got one. Do yes. you happen to know what the, like, the shortcut or the keybind is to open up a new layer on Windows? Um, if you go under, um, here, here it is on Mac. You can see it up here. Layers, it's Shift, Command, N. And so if you go there, it. go there on your Windows computer, it'll show you the same kind of things. It might be identical, I don't know. But all these shortcuts, yeah. they, again, sometimes they change from Mac to a PC, but if there is a shortcut, typically it shows you in that the drop-down menus. Does that make sense? All right, thank you. And again, it's just choice. Okay. Um, let me just write down what we've covered today, so we're good. Well, I guess the uh, other thing is, is are we like sending the photo that we edit to you, or? No, not right now. I just want you to do it. Okay. Okay. Just, just do it. If you have problems, let me know. Okay. You're like, well, I got, I totally got confused, or whatever. That's fine. Let me know. Um, but I, I want you to just kind of work and play. You don't need to, I don't need you to pressure yourself with submissions, whatever. You're gonna, you're gonna turn stuff in, don't worry. At this point, you just, I just want you to kind of learn how to drive the car, right? So start the car and drive it around the parking lot. That's where we are. We, we haven't gotten to, um, we haven't got, got to the Maserati yet. Okay. Lamborghini, we'll get to the Lamborghini soon. But we got to start with the car in the parking lot. The old beat up Toyota. But 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 Photoshop is is a is a is a Lamborghini. It it does incredible things. So all right, anything else? Um are we using that exact picture that you've been using? Yeah, I would I would use her just as a sample to get you adjusted to it because you can see has blemishes and it's pretty easy to access the eye and stuff. If you want to do this to, you know, your mom, fine. Get a picture of your mom and play with it. That's all, by all means. Um, but, um, you know, use this picture just as a sample to, so you know you're doing it. Is that like a stock photo provided by yeah, it's just, yeah, Photoshop? It's just, or? It's just a stock photo I've, I've, I've picked up over the time. So. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else? Let me stop the share again. Okay. Can okay. anybody come in that I missed? Double check my attendance. Okay. All right. I think I got everyone. Um, I'll start to put in attendance also in the Canvas. Um, sometime in the next day or two or whatever. If you see something like, oh, I was there and I missed you, just let me know and I'll make that correction. I'm trying to keep track of it on a, a little piece of paper. 
Um, but if something gets screwed up, just let me know there in that particular case. All right, uh, anything else for today? All right, guys, have a great weekend. You've got through, All right. you got through the first week is done. All right. Thank you so much. All right, have a good weekend. We'll Thank see you. each other Monday. All right. All right. Have a good weekend.